Welcome to the ATP Project. You're with your host, Steve and Jeff. G'day, Steve. G'day, mate. How are you? Mate, PCOS. We're going to be talking about PCOS. Now, we're, we're going back because one of the original episodes that we did, episode 11, mm-hmm. was on PCOS. Oh, yeah. And we also did an interview with Sophie Van Campen as well, too, episode 199. 199. Yep. Yep. Um, but there's a lot of information come out, a lot more, Steve, that Piles. we're understanding. Yeah, no, we're not talking about piles. We're talking about oh, piles, that's right. right? Sorry, but, got confused. But um, there's a lot of information that we need to share and yep. a lot of updating. So, Steve, take it away. All right. Well, PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome because some people might be going, "What's a PCOS?" Yeah. And it used to be called Stein Leventhal disease um, or Stein Leventhal uh, syndrome, which was because these two scientists back in 1935 called it that. So, some people may still know it as that. Right. Now, polycystic uh, ovarian. People of your era, Steve, yeah, that yeah. were. You in know, 1935. Growing up in 1935. I was, I was young, but no, I was. No, you weren't. You were quite old then. So, but yes, it's an old, old acronym. But it yeah. is. But, but weirdly, it was only discovered in 19. And I'll get, right. I'll hit you with some fact. It was discovered in 1935 or written about all in the journals. But it's now in one in five women wow. in Australia of childbearing age. Wow. So it's just gone from virtually nothing to virtually everybody. And it's, it's scary because it causes infertility. Do they understand why, Steve, there's such an increase? Why? There, there is. Why? And the main, the main thing, and this Diet is cool. Yep. It has and, to be. And it has to be. And, and it's five tips to better understand PCOS. And the first tip we have to understand is that insulin resistance drives PCOS. So hang on. Steve, we live in an age where science is improving. Yep. We know, you know, more about health, nutrition, mm-hmm. you know, more than we've ever known. We understand, you know, the human gut. We yep. understand hormones, but yet we seem to be getting sicker and sicker with more preventable diseases. And this is one of them. How is this possible? I know, it's incredible. And the reason being is because if you think of 1935 or mm-hmm. pre-1935, not, not many people had cars. Yeah. Not many people had computer jobs. We were moving around more. Yep, we had more, more ag- agrarian society. Correct. So, yep, we yep. had less sugars, less refined foods, zero McDonald's, mm-hmm. um, and all this sort of stuff. No so, artificial sweeteners. Of course, uh, all these sorts of things that spike insulin up. So, so the way to drop drop insulin down is simply to eat better mm-hmm. and to exercise more. Mm-hmm. So we're now we're, we're we're exercising less as a population. Yep. Some of us are exercising good amounts. Yeah, but it seems to be a real um, divergence there. Yeah. For those that are fit and healthy, they are flipping fit and healthy. Correct. They are, uh, well, they're fit. I mm. mean, depending on what they're eating as well, too. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if it's a if it's your macro sort of thing, yep. you got to be careful because mm-hmm. you could be missing out on some of the nutrients. And we, we've spoken about that before. Yeah. But um, but certainly, obesity, Steve, is is on the rise as well, too. Correct. And 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 what we know about insulin resistance is it drives certain things. It, it drives, again, five certain changes in the body. Insulin resistance causes dyslipidemia where you get changes of fats in the blood like cholesterols and triglycerides, which clog up receptors of hormones and do all sorts of hormonal things. Right. Then right. you get dysglycemia, so you get high blood sugar levels, yep. which again spikes more insulin, so you get yep. this positive feedback, which is terrible. Yep. Yep. You get a reduction in this thing called sex hormone binding globulin. Yeah, right. Now, that, that binds up your excessive... Sex hormones. So, so, so people that are training would be going, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, the more free testosterone, then yeah. the more, more muscle tissue. Oh, yeah. But the negative side effects of that, Steve? It, yeah, because if, if you're, say, a young woman with PCOS yep. and you've got low sex hormone <laughs> binding globulin, the testosterone that's floating around in your system becomes more active too. Yep. And you and I might want more active testosterone because we get yes. bigger muscles, if that's possible. Yeah. Um, probably not. But then we get leaner. But a woman, opposite yep. happens. Hirschatism. Hirschatism. Which and, is where your facial... Facial growth? Correct. And they, of course, get um, elevated LH, which, of course, drives up luteinizing hormone, mm-hmm. which gives – and and the end of this is they get an increase in androgens, and that's the summary which causes the PCOS. And that's probably the, the, the number one chief factor for PCOS. There's S in PCOS stands for syndrome, so mm-hmm. it's got lots of symptoms. Yep. But the number one thing is higher androgens in women. And the problem is, Steve, is that those – people, specifically women, obviously, yeah. that are suffering from PCOS, um, yeah. is that they're not going to be lean, ripped machines with a beard and no. acne. No. They're, they're decompartmentalises, right? So then uh, the estrogen then can get out of whack as well too. It does, um, because one of the genetic components of PCOS is an enzyme called um, cytochrome P41519A1. Its nickname is aromatase. And in women with PCOS, that's lowered. Now, what does that mean? Well, that enzyme converts testosterone through to estrogen, mm. okay? Now, if that's lowered in women, they get a buildup of testosterone and a relative lowering of estrogen, okay? So that's bad. So they get these things that make more testosterone and it can't be converted into estradiol. So they end up with too much testosterone. So you're right, they get the hirsutism, the, the beard. Look, look, they look masculine. And I hate to say that because yep. it's, a, it's a slur, but they do get 
frank beards and hirstism. They, they get balding. Mm -hmm. They get thicker around the waist here like guys do. Mm -hmm. um, they, their libido goes. They get mental health disorders up the wazoo, depression, anxiety, all these sorts of things, and they become infertile. Wow. So there, that's PCOS. And PCOS is not um, – and. It, it, it is not just cysts on the ovaries. Right. Um, it can be, yep. and it often is, but it's usually high androgens, insulin resistance, and cysts on the ovaries. So they're the three symptoms you look out for. And the high androgens, the high testosterone and other androgens, is the main problem. Now, the other problem is, of course, with ovarian dysfunction is they don't ovulate. Now, when, you, when a woman ovulates, they produce lovely progesterone that women love. And if they're not ovulating, they can't produce that progesterone. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the weird medical treatment for this is to give them estrogen and progesterone, i.e. contraceptive pill. Right. And that ups, up, shoots up sex hormone binding globulin. Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't address the no, cause no, of it. No, no, that's right. It's, again, it's a Band-Aid on a yeah. bullet, 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 bullet wound. But um, uh, it, it's interesting, actually, yeah. just to lighten it up a little bit, Steve, okay. I heard the other day someone said... Um, uh, you know, you've got a, a, a dad bod. Actually, this is a joke from Tony, which I've found... Yeah. Your wife, Tony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not funny at all. Oh, she was funny this she, morning, actually. She said some funny stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she did, actually, Steve. I think that was more your jokes at her expense. Yeah, that's which right. is kind of interesting. Yeah. But, um, and she goes, um, she saw, uh, you know, a guy wearing a T-shirt um, going, um, I don't have a dad bod, I'm a fatherly figure. <laughs> I'm like, that's pretty, that's pretty funny. That's the cleanest joke I've heard you say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but in terms of then, Steve, yeah. uh, putting estrogen in is, yeah. is, is really just, uh, again, that's what the body needs. Yeah. So then they're synthetically putting it in, yes. but it's not addressing the issue. No, it's not addressing the issue. And this is treated as like a diabetes now. Right. Because the way they treat it, and we'll get into the diet nutrition, is you treat it like diabetes. Mm. So it, it becomes a lifestyle disease. And that's bad news and it's good news. Now, if you look at the literature, you, you see that PCOS can't be treated and can't be cured. However, the symptoms can be reversed and there's a, there's a real quandary in the medical literature about can this be reversed? Mm -hmm. And I think the answer should be yes. So Steve, if someone's got PCOS, they're listening to this podcast. Yes. What should they do? All right. The first thing they should do is to, um, and, and this is the same when I was in practice, the first thing they should do is implement a resistance exercise program. Really important, right? I'm being specific because most people go, oh, yeah, I'm active, I run after the kids or I go for a walk on the Sundays. Or I, You really have to, um, you know, get exercising tougher because remember there is this genetic component. Mm -hmm. So there is, uh, you can be predisposed to PCOS. There, uh -huh. there are women out there who don't exercise and eat okay or average or poorly and don't get PCOS. Sure. But if they've got that enzyme of aromatase that's not, um, high enough, then yep. that's a, uh, under gene number 10, I think it is. If that's slow, then you will get a buildup of testosterone easier. So first things first, exercise faster before breakfast. And, and one of those things as well too, if you're going to exercise, yep. don't go for your one, two kilo plus coated dumbbells and do some uh, forearm curls. Correct. Right? Go for squats, yep. leg press, lunges. Um, you want to be working your, your, your major muscle groups, Correct. quads, hamstrings, glutes, back, mm -hmm. um, other things that you should focus on. I mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, if you're going to do it, why not go the whole way and do, you know, yeah. do, do some training and actually try and sculpt a bit of a physique, so shoulders and, mm. and obviously, um, you know, core is really important. But try and pick exercises that um, stimulate the entire central nervous system as well. Yeah. So, for example, if you're going to do shoulders, which would be down the list in terms of your priorities, mm. do standing shoulder press as yeah. opposed to a seated supported shoulder press. That way you're going to engage the core. Yeah. Um, it's actually going to engage everything up from your, from your bloody toes. Correct. But squats... Uh, even if you just start off doing um, like static squats or slow squats, um, Ken Ware recommended highly, he reckoned that everybody should um, do squats effectively to recalibrate and balance mm -hmm. their body. And that's by doing a slow cyclical squat. And I think he was saying that you should be doing at least six or, or seven of them, I think it was. Um, basically shoulder width apart, very nice and slow, mm -hmm. you know, count to five on the mm -hmm. way down, which is a heck of a long time when it you're is. trying to do a squat. Your quads will really start burning and yeah. your glutes as well. Stick your butt out. Yeah. If you need to put a chair behind you, try not to sit on the chair yeah. and then slowly, without pausing at the bottom, yeah. and this is, this, is the, this is the important thing, then slowly come back up and then down again, yeah. right? So you don't need weights to do that. Lunges as well too, where you actually come down, look at the, YouTube's a great 
you know, thing. They are, yeah. um, like walking lunges as well too. You don't need to use weights. Yeah. Uh, doing some some push-ups as well too. Mm-hmm. Even doing some pull-ups where you get a bar and you even put your feet forward. So you don't need sure. to be, you know, free chinning, you know, or doing 20 kilo hanging chins or anything like that. Yeah. Just any form of exercise that you can do. Mm-hmm. Hill sprints. Yes. Hill runs. Yes. I mean, even things like that that are going to engage those those muscles are going to help. But absolutely, weight bearing exercise 100 percent will and, help. And it is the one. And there's there's literature on that. That, that we, if you ever want the papers on that, we've got it here. So that's the very, very first thing. And, and it's not just like, yeah, yeah, I'll get around to it. It's, it's important. Yeah. It's not, yeah, I'll get around to it. Here's a paper on that in, in International Journal of Exercise. Science. It, it said you have to do resistance exercise. So, you know, this is, this is quite clear in the literature for PCOS. So it's not, not debatable. The second thing you have to look at here is eating right. Now, this, is, this gets a bit tricky because this study here I've got, this was published in the uh, Annuals of Nutritional Metabolism, looked at five different diets for PCOS. Okay. I'm blind, Steve. I can't see that ah. with my glasses on. But I was going to say, okay, yeah. so if my opinion then for – so are we talking everything from, from – um, hang on, don't, don't say okay. I'm giving away. But like your um, you know, high-fibre – Yep, that's um, one. Yep, uh, uh, keto would definitely be yep, one. Yep, that's the other one. Um, you've also got your uh, re- reduced sugar. Yep, low GI. Um, yep. Yeah, low, low, low GI. Yep. Um, uh, high protein. Yep. Um, but m- yes. my opinion would probably be that keto would probably be right up there. However, <laughs> it was, right. It was the best. Right, okay. They're yep. all good. They, they all worked. Here's the yes. weird thing. Yep. The, the one that was least best but still was better than the average diet that, it, uh, that still was a pulse-based diet. So in other words, like a vegan yep. diet. Still worked. With beans. Beans, yep. Yeah, yeah they and called it a pulse-based diet. And PBD. it takes time. And this is the yeah. thing. If you're going to go over to that because um, – yeah. Your body needs to build up the the enzymes in the body, right, to be able to break down the a- amylase and, yep. and what have you. And mm-hmm. that's what causes farts. It but does. It's like anything. Add them in slowly. Yeah. And don't look at me like that. Brooklyn's like going, yeah, Jeff knows all about that, right? <laughs> but um, <laughs> but seriously, build, build it up, Yeah. right? I mean, what's that old saying when you're at, at school? Beans, beans are good for your heart. The more you eat, the oh, more that, you fart. That, the that, more you fart, was, the better, better you feel. Was so that's it. Was beans a with everything. Oh, he, he says toot. Yeah, yeah, the magical fruit. The magical fruit. The more you eat, the more you toot. Yep. <laughs> Five diets. So, so they, okay, they, yeah, they so, analyze sorry, them all. The food. Yep. So, really, really well, interesting. So obviously fiber is huge because yes. that also helps to bind um, uh you know, the bile, it binds the bile that gets rid of the excessive hormones out of the body. That's it, Steve. Yeah. I can't say it. You, you say it so well. Oh, well, I've said it for years. So, so the, 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 they looked at them all and they all helped. So even the Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, yep. low GI, but the ketogenic diet was slightly superior. It wasn't significantly mm-hmm. better, mm-hmm. but it worked better. Now, people think ketogenic diet is a high-protein diet. It's actually a moderate to low protein. It's high, pr- high, high fats. High fat. Yep. Um, and, and the reason why is that was, had the most impact on lowering insulin. insulin. Well, a, ma- a massive impact. Yeah. But the thing is as well too, like Tony cannot do keto. No. So if you can't do keto and you're don't, not interested in mm. doing keto, mm. then just strip out the sugar. Correct. Specifically refined sugar, but yep. then your hidden sugars as well, as you say, Steve. So your refined wheat and, yep. and, uh, and other you know, quite carbohydrates, but, you know, incorporate lots of salad, lots yep. of, of fats from avocados yep. and nuts and seeds mm-hmm. and that sort of stuff are absolutely fantastic because that also then supports hormones. Correct. But a, a lot of people reduce their fats too low, yeah. which I appreciate if you're trying to lose mm-hmm. that. They go, oh, sugar's actually way worse, oh, way, yeah. way worse. That's the worst. If you can get rid of your sugar out of your diet but keep in healthy you know, fats mm-hmm. as opposed to fats, you know, that are saturated from or trans fats from, you know, your burgers and your mm-hmm. chips and that sort of stuff, which normally come with superfluous carbohydrates, which are normally quite simple and easy to turn into sugars. And you've got the worst combination of an insulin spike with fat. Yes. So that's really bad. The trans fats particularly are very bad. And, and they just clock up the receptors. And so, so yeah, it was a good one. Well, one thing I found interesting here was when you had a lot of fruits and vegetables, you, you can tend to eat a lot of polyphenols. Now, polyphenols have an effect on the gut, and we'll get to that because that's oh, yeah. in here too. That's, don't yeah, you worry yeah. about that. But it also uh, – polyphenols regulate the, that, that enzyme that converts testosterone through to estradiol. Right. So it helps speed up the detoxification of testosterone. So it's like a medicine. And it's funny. It's like the podcast that we're doing with Dr. Will. Fruit is not 
bad. No. Especially if you can combine it with sources of protein and other things mm-hmm. like that as well too. But I mean, for goodness sakes, that old adage, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. The, nice. the polyphenols, the mm-hmm. fiber, the pectin, I mean, mm-hmm. like the, the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals, I mean, it's so, so good. Yeah. And I think a lot of people throw the baby out with the bathwater. Sure, you might not want to be sucking down watermelon every three minutes, mm-hmm. um, you know, but from time to time, especially if you can get that, those grapes with the, the musket grapes with mm-hmm. the seeds and the heavy skin mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, the, the, the non-pesticide sprayed apples, I'm going to, again, go for your organic yep. and incorporate them with the protein shake or that sort of stuff. It is Fiber is so, 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 so important. Oh, it's incredible. And, of course, it improves your gut microbiome. And as I said, it, that, that's huge with PCOS and there's papers in there on that. One other feature of women with this higher testosterone is that they develop larger muscles. Mm. Now, this is, this is one of those things that is either good or bad depending on your own personal preference to mm-hmm. muscles on a woman. And mm-hmm. some women like bigger muscles. That's great. And they compete in body. We talked about that off camera before. I love a woman that can pick me up and carry me over the half stick. <laughs> yes. Right. So the diets, they all work. But the key, as you said, the ketogenic diet is better because it has a greater effect on insulin. Uh-huh. So, so what we're building here for the people who are listening with PCOS or interested is we've got to reduce insulin levels. And we do that by exercise because mm-hmm. exercise burns sugars without insulin. Yep. Otherwise, insulin has to be pumped out by the pancreas, the beta cell, grab hold of the the cells in your body like the glute 4 transporters open them up and let sugar in yeah yeah the other way opens those sticky doors too if you're starting to get insulin resistant where those those cells don't want to it forces them open it forces them open and if if, if it doesn't open with a little bit of insulin it just pumps out more yeah now insulin of course drives up androgen production in women Mm -hmm. so then the women get uh, more androgenized, which is very bad for a woman. They, as we said before, they get the the skin problems. They get the the larger muscles, which is either good or bad depending on. But they get large muscle groups in their arms and legs, um, which you know, as I said, I think looks good. But some women don't like to be bulky. Mm. You know, they like to be fine. Mm. They lose their hair, which no one likes. They lose their fertility, um, and so they, they get thicker around the waist, and that's they lose the hourglass figure of the feminine estrogen type because mm. they've got androgens. They look like, look like a male in the body shape probably offend mm. someone saying it, but they lose that or someone might like that but go for it i mean yeah. do the opposite of what we're saying and you'll be happy absolutely mm. so so the ketogenic diet was very good and, and the way the way that it really worked was was pumping out insulin now the mediterranean diet is a bit of a controversial one because people say oh but don't the italians eat lots of pasta well the traditional mediterranean diet is low in carbohydrates believe oh, it or not really? it's high and they, they they pick the four things that they they encourage you to eat more in the mediterranean diet which is the extra virgin olive oil yep. and that's got the polyphenols mm-hmm. and polyphenols from all the tomatoes and all those sort mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. foods vitamin e oleic acid oleic acid is the main oil of, of olive oil that's where it gets name from and things like resveratrol reduce engine production we so red wine yeah, exactly. So I think in terms of um, pasta ain't pasta as well too, Steve. Yeah. You know, using um, what type of wheat they were using. And yes. I mean, typically they were stone milling it, yeah. and grinding it, and mm. it had all the goodness in there. Yeah. Again, our, our food is very, very, very bland and, and, yeah. and ultra refined and removed most of the good nutrients. Same as, as stone mill bread and, mm. and all that sort of stuff as well too. They'd use the whole wheat germ. They'd, yeah. they'd, they'd, you know, and, and that's the thing is that food isn't food. No. So even when you look at that, the, the amounts that they're eating, yeah. the way that it was prepared, the mm. way that it was cooked, mm. the other things that were added to it. Once you really start to look at globe, you know, modern, you know, globalization and the way that things are done, it's all for profit and very, very bad for your health. Very bad. Which is why we say eat fresh, eat local. Absolutely. And and you gotta remember when the Italians traditionally were were getting all this, they still had to harvest the wheat themselves, you know, slash the wheat down and do all the exercise to get it, not just open up the cabin and, you know, pour the spaghetti in a pot of boiling water that's highly refined. That's not an Italian, that's not a Mediterranean diet, mm. a traditional Mediterranean diet. So, you know, if okay, so so ideally women, you know, go hard on the ketogenic diet early and then you can introduce more fruits and vegetables. So you get that initial sort of two week sort of insulin drop. And that's that's the best thing you can do because that gets rid of all that that high insulin. So, mm. you know, you, you you come back from your exercise and the morning breakfast might be, you know, whole eggs with cut up uh, capsicums, which, you know, red capsicums, the higher polyphenols, uh, put some herbs in there and some, some spinach. And that would be a great start to your breakfast. Yeah, herbs and spices. I think people forget. I mean, like they're good for tasting, but man, they're so, so powerful for you, 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 you mentioned up spices. Yeah. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll get, I'll get up, spicy. I'll, I'll go to the back of the Yeah. I'll give you a spice called cinnamon. Now, everyone knows cinnamon. I. Right? Cinnamon. And look, Steve, I don't know anything about anything, but cinnamon, coming up to Christmas time, you're going to get plenty of cinnamon, hopefully, if it's real cinnamon. But cinnamon yeah. is my understanding, Steve, and mm. again, you, you sh- tell me here, 
unbelievable for lowering um, blood glucose. Absolutely it is. Uh, I've got a, a, a paper here which is going to be put on the screen by our magic man, Matt, who's going to um, really show you the mechanisms of action, how cinnamon works. But I'll, I'll run through it very quickly. I love cinnamon. Oh, well, there's another reason to love it. It upregulates adenosine monophosphate kinase, which is the exercise-like enzyme. So when you exercise, you upregulate AMPK. Is yeah. Thing. Yeah. And so this upregulates AMK without the exercise. Now, we're not suggesting you don't exercise and just have cinnamon. So this was would um, upregulate that. Now, here's, here's where it gets beautiful. It, AMK upregulates PPAR alpha. Yeah. yeah. PPAR alpha, peroxone proliferator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. PPAR. Does, I thought that P, So AMK helps with fat loss. I thought PPAR increases muscle mass. It does. PPAR gamma does. Oh. PPAR alpha upregulates uncoupling protein. Oh, one. sweet. Yes. Wow. I mean, the funny thing is, is that yeah. Matt, Steve, Owen, and Elizabeth yeah. always are talking about how you uncouple protein. Yes. Seriously. Absolutely. Have they isolated that compound, Steve, that does that? It's called cinnamon. Ah, okay. I was going to say. Dave cinnamon, Charles. AMK, PPAR, uncoupling mm. protein one. And this is going to be put on the screen. So mm. I always look and go, how can we... How can we turn this into a product? <laughs> How can we get more of this? Because I would go, I need more of it. And as you can see, promotion. Tony was saying I was looking a little chubby around the thighs the other day. No, no. You were tasting that to Tony? No, no, Tony said that to me. Oh, oh that, yeah. No, no. That, that is a crime against humanity. <laughs> uh, you, a man does not talk about no, a woman's body. No. A woman can talk about a man's body. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Goodness. I think she just meant the rippling uh, muscles in your quadriceps. I think she might have been referring to. No. Yeah. Mm, damn. Yeah, there's, so, no, there's no ripples. The only ripples is <laughs> if someone flicks me with a towel, right? And it's sort of like. Yeah. <laughs> Remember a, Homer Simpson? Woo, yeah, look at yeah. that blubber fly. That, that's kind of rip, those kind of ripples at the moment, unfortunately, Steve. Well, cinnamon will help you with I that. I think I'm going to get some. Absolutely. Because you get uncoupling protein. Now, for those who are listening, going, what's, what's he talking about uncoupling protein? Uncoupling protein is like when a cell leaks protons. Now, protons are positively charged things which leak into the cell slowly and the body has to work hard to pump them out. If you increase uncoupling protein, you get this massive leak of protons. So the cells have to generate a whole of a lot of heat to get rid of those protons. And when you generate heat, you burn energy. Oh, it's awesome. So it's like putting your... Genesis. It's like, yeah, it's like uh, driving in your car and putting your foot on the clutch. Mm. And the car's just spinning and burning fuel. Mm. Well, this is burning fat. Mm. So, I mean, the millennials may not know about what a clutch is or they all drive autos these days, but mm. hopefully people know what a clutch is. Yeah. So, so here's the beautiful thing. Um, you increase mitochondrial function, so you actually end up with more energy. And so you actually get more energy out of just having cinnamon. So cinnamon, go, just go for your cinnamon um, uh, donuts. Yeah, that's, ah. that's exactly what we're talking about. Can you imagine someone, you know, taking that on and going, oh, I'll have cinnamon donuts? Well, the, you know, have you watched Idiocracy, Steve? Yes, so I have. So Johnny and I are talking about that movie again this morning. Have you watched it? <sighs> Yeah, the, you're the greatest disappointment uh, of my life, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Um, yeah. Uh. <laughs> From all people all the time. Um, terrible. Yeah. But no, no, definitely. That's cinnamon. No, and, and don't also, do the donut side of things. No. And cinnamon itself also um, increases insulin sensitivity independently of those actions. Mm. So it does everything. It's like this, this chart, which, you know, will go up. It's published in 2021. It just shows you how good herbs are. And it also helps the microbiome too. And, and you know... We can, we can talk about the microbiome, which you'd be better talk about the microbiome because I've promised that and time is, is getting there. But the microbiome is, is very interesting because what, what we didn't know, we, we knew about the genetic thing about women, you know, not being able to make enough estrogen and making testosterone. We knew that there was something to do with insulin resistance, mm -hmm. but we didn't know what drives all this. So, you know, if, if you're one of these people who are listening to this and going, you know what, I've tried everything, I exercise, I eat well, but I'm still not getting the results. It could be your gut microbiome. Right. And you need to take concentrated polyphenols to help your gut microbiome. Mm. Um, so if you can get source some of that stuff, um, then that will boost the healthy but microbiome in your gut, mm -hmm. which will help with insulin resistance. And again, see, just for people's diets, I mean, if you're trying to incorporate more of these things, what are some polyphenol-rich foods that you would incorporate? You mentioned an apple before. Yeah. The peel of an apple is simple very, enough very to good. start with So that. don't, I mean, it's funny. A lot, people peel their apples to take the skin off. It's like, yeah. no, no, don't do that. And you know what else you can do? You can get that and dip it in a bit of cinnamon. There you go. 
and, and you know that helps your gut too. Yeah. Uh, Shisandra berries are yeah. very what about good. Vinaigrettes and stuff like that, Steve. Yeah, vinaigrettes. Yeah. Yeah. Because that that kombucha, that kombucha teas, because they're high in a thing called acetic acid, mm. which is a short chain fatty acid, which mm. is very good for your gut microbiome. Mm. Mm. So any of those apple cider vinegar, which I can't typically stand, bitter things as well too. I actually don't mind the the kombuchas, um, apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Um, you know the the vinaigrettes. So like even the the purple. I, I hate it, but I eat them um, when Tony, you know, sort of serves it up. But the, the purple lettuce leaves and that, they're oh, very, yeah. very astringent and bitter. Yeah. And that's what we're missing in our diet. We're missing those astringent, bitter type foods. We are. Um, and again, we mentioned grapes, mm-hmm. but um, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, you know, all of those things are really good as well too. Um, yeah. They are good because they help the microbiome because of the oligoparanthocyanins in them, mm. which is like the colouring of them. And they're powerful antioxidants that, that protect the plant from the sun. Because you've got to remember, these things sit in the sun all day. Yeah. You know, we, we can duck out of it, but they just have to sit there all day. So they make these potent antioxidants to protect mm. them from the UV damage. Mm. And they have these mild poisons and polyphenols to stop the bugs. Nitromedium, yeah. And that's what actually we need. It's, it's just amazing the way that... Um, that everything was created and interrelated, Steve. And as soon as we start breaking those sorts of rules, that's where we have the piper to pay. Absolutely. Mm. It, it, it's, it's, we've got to do that. Now, there are a lot of natural molecules which can um, cause, which, which are also very good for PCOS, that are, are things that you may be very familiar with. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you the, probably the, the, my favourite one is inositol. Inositol, an amino yeah. acid. Yep, yep. So it's like amino acid. Inositol and choline actually yeah. help to form. Uh, lipotransporters. Lipotransporters, so, yeah, yeah so absolutely. So that actually helps to to, yep. to utilise and, and burn fat. But what else? Why inositol specifically? Well, inositol specifically works with insulin sensitivity. Okay. It's it's very anti-diabetic. Is it's again we're we're, we're crossing that diabetes link here. So well, they, they are. They're like cousins, right? They are. They are. But it is. I mean, as I said, uh, another drug that doctors prescribe for people with PCOS is a drug called metformin. We talked yeah. about that earlier. And that's a drug that's common, very commonly used for uh, type 1 diabetes. Mm-hmm. And the way, the mechanism, actually, you can love this. The mechanism by which it works is it increases a gut microbiome bug called acomanzia. I love acomanzia. We love acomanzia. That so, makes you fitter, faster, go for longer. Yep. Steve, like, improves. I mean, if you look at the carbon, so you look at... AFL is, you look at yep. triathletes, you look at long distance runners, the acomanzia that they would have in their gut would be significantly higher than Huge. the average population. Because when you train, you know that burning that you get in the back of the throat? Yep. That's carbon. carbon yeah. Acomanzia feeds on carbon. I know. It, it, it and it loves displaces it. the bad stuff. So really part does. of the reason why you get skinnier when you're exercising, yes, mm-hmm. it's from burning calories, mm-hmm. but it's actually because you're completely remapping and changing your gut. Correct. Which is why, obviously, we're such huge fans. And look, I've got to tell we've just signed on a new project again so matt and elisma are working and you steve because yeah. you've been doing some of this we're firing up the gut project again because we've done some studies with um some some institutions yep. around polyphenols mm-hmm. and we're working on something past polyphenols yes very exciting good very very exciting Can we, and talk I think, we can't talk much about no it. we can't nah. well i could tell you steve no, no. But I'd have to kill, kill me. Yeah. I might kill you anyway. That's right. I might be worth it. It's I actually, exciting. I actually think about killing you all the time. <laughs> yeah. I actually, Steve, I've got something to tell you after the podcast. Oh, God. Here we go. Well, oh, it's nice knowing you all. Yeah. Oh, God. Now, now you're going to love this next, next one that they found that was very good. Now, now they grouped them all together, resveratrol, flavanols, and flavones, which are, which are in the nuts, berries, and grapes. So, again, those foods which you've talked nuts. about. I often forget about nuts, Steve. Do you? Mm. Mm. You don't think about nuts often? No, it's not sort of something that comes to the front of my mind. I mean, yes. No, um, but, but nuts but should what, come what are to the, the front best, of you. What are the best? And it's the skin on the nuts, right? Skin on nuts. So, <laughs> so if you think of... Um, <laughs> got people uh, giggling in the background Oh, here. I'm sorry. I mean, like, All you know, come on. Jokes. We're just 13-year-olds, really. Yeah. You know, I may, I may not look 13, but I feel 13. Mm. Now, speaking of nuts, the mm. best nuts are beer nuts. Can you oh, believe that? You know what? What? <laughs> I like... No. <laughs> They got the still the, they got the with the skins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's bloody dangerous getting them, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worth the effort oh, no. if you survive. I oh, know. Yeah. And and Nobby's a good source of the nuts too. They're the ones yeah. with the beer nuts. Well, you know, and the and the thing is is that the deer nuts are not actually <laughs> the deer. deer. Nuts. Yeah. <laughs> You find them under a buck. <laughs> <laughs> They're not expensive at all. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. 
Okay, so let's get back into it. So in terms of the um, <laughs> the best nuts are the ones with the skin. Skin on so them. peanuts. Yep. Peanuts, yep. Uh, which, are be, which are beer, beer nuts. nuts. Yep. What, what, are, um, what about uh, almonds of, you know, and not blanched? Yeah, yeah, you've got to have that. Yeah, blanched if you're an Aussie. Because yep. it was all that skin is, is uh, very high uh, risk And um, uh, uh, the ones that give you selenium. Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts, yeah. I, I, I just I can't, I don't like the taste of them. Ah, they're awful tasting things. Yeah. But the selenium is very good for regulating testosterone in women particularly and also thyroid function in women. Specifically too. for people in Australia and New Zealand, we don't get yeah. enough selenium. No. Actually, I, and there are probably other countries as well too, but, but like selenium is a massive deal. And, mm-hmm. and if you're not getting it um, because it's not in the soil, you probably yeah. need to look at that. Specific, and as you mentioned before, any guys out there, yeah. any history of, of um, prostate cancer, mm-hmm. seriously do yourself a favour and eat three Brazil nuts a day, I think. You only eat yeah, three. Now, you got to remember selenium makes glutathione, which is the most potent antioxidant. Uh, it upregulates the enzyme glutathione peroxidase. So, the, and glutathione is a great detoxifier of heavy metals as mm, well, mm. and it's a great antioxidant. So, it's one of the, and it's a tripeptide, it's three amino acids that are made in your body. So, it's extraordinarily good for detox as well. So, uh, I can't be, speak highly enough of selenium. Well, what about with a little bit of dark chocolate on it, Steve? You know? Oh, yeah. Can I do that? Yeah, I mean, that, like you've got antioxidant. I mean, I know you're getting sugar then, but. Not much sugar. And then mm-hmm. you can get sugar free dark chocolate if that, but, but a little bit of dark chocolate is fine. With your Brazil nut. Correct. Yeah, that was that's good. You can get nuts. Yeah, there you something. go. The doctor's Beautiful. prescribed it. And now, now the, Steve. the the other the other nutrient that they really need is good old vitamin C. Now, now we sort of overlooked that vitamin, but you got to remember the chemical vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is very similar to the molecule of glucose. But Steve, I mean, uh, I remember the podcast that we did. We only mm-hmm. needed 135 milligrams, 150 About milligrams, that, yeah. roughly. Um, and you should easily be able to get that from your broccoli, correct? Or from I mean, and it's funny because most people go citrus. I mean, absolutely. Yep. You know, your citrus. Fruits, probably yep. you're going to get enough. You don't need a thousand milligrams of no. vitamin C a day, and that's the problem. People are overdosing on Correct. vitamin C, which is actually a pro-oxidant if Absolutely. you get too much. It's funny because most people go, "Oh, vitamin C is an antioxidant." No, yeah. it's actually a pro-oxidant. It's, pro- it's called so, a scorp- a scorable radical. So, one of those things in terms of your vitamin mix when you're out there mm-hmm. looking for them. Vitamin C would probably be one of the last things on mind, Steve. It is, and that's um, why it's nearing the end of the podcast and we're starting to mention it now. The only reason they need to worry about it is because the molecule sugar glucose is very similar to the molecule of ascorbic acid. In fact, most animals on Earth can make um, vitamin C from glucose. Yeah. Well, all animals except for us. Yeah, he's going to say us. Monkeys, monkeys, uh, and guinea pigs. Monkeys and guinea pigs. I was, I think, I was talking to Brooklyn about this, and I was saying, do you know, do you know where the term the human guinea pig comes from? Because guinea pigs were used in experiments simply because they can't make vitamin C, ah. and that was there because rats can. So they're not not close to humans, but in that mechanism, they're close to humans. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So so because you've got high blood sugar levels as, as a diabetic slash PCOS, mm. vitamin C gets shuttled out of the way a bit. So you have to be a bit cautious in that. And what they did was they tested the diets of PCOS sufferers and they typically ate worse. Mm. So just be aware of fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, vitamin E has also been shown to benefit uh, PCOS uh, sufferers too. Yeah. And here's the biggie Good for me. Good sources of vitamin E is... is um, Nuts again. Yeah, uh, sunflower Oils. seeds, right? Yep. Yep. Very good. Um, um, and, and this one is, is, is an interesting one, is, is vitamin D. That, that's got pages of literature on that. And look, and today more than ever, yeah. with the immune system as well too, Steve, yep. people should absolutely be getting vitamin D. Yeah. Now, best source is free. Yeah, sun. From the sun. Yeah. So about 10 minutes of exposure, Steve, is that about right? Full body exposure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steve, absolutely. He wears a mankini, takes a photo going, Jeff, just get him a vitamin D. I know, but uh, well, I wear a G-string, so that's yeah. all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. I, I don't thought, think, I I don't think anyone would say it's all right, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> but you get more vitamin D. I was doing it purely for health. Yeah. Okay? And he keeps wanting to show me yeah. his, um, his tan line scissors. Yeah. Is something wrong with this? No, I thought you'd like it. Mm. No? Oh, I'll stop sending them to you yeah. every night then. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, vitamin D. Yeah, and about ten minutes, um, morning, full, afternoon, full, full, no, middle of the day. Middle now, of the day. Now this is weird because people think, oh, it's dangerous in the middle of the day. It is if you get too much of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like anything, Steve. Yeah, and so, so a classic thing is if you work in an office and you know you can go out at lunchtime and swim in a pool for half an hour, whatever you can do, that would We're be good. We're not putting in a pool. No, that'd no. be that'd be awesome. Though, yeah, wouldn't, I wouldn't. It? That would be absolutely. Yeah, awesome. but no, no. Okay, so. And then, <laughs> I'm going to see all the guys running down the back, stripping off their clothes for 10 minutes. What are you doing? Just, 
Yeah, I mean, it's like people go for a cigarette break, right? Yeah, I'm going out right. for a vitamin D break. Yeah, that, that actually, makes, we should start that as a trend. That's actually well, not a bad well, idea. Well, the smoking kills you, and vitamin D, you know, makes you live longer. Um, so but it's vitamin great. D, but I mean, D3. If you're looking for a yeah. supplement, so if you live in a yeah, winter yeah. time, yeah. cloudy England, 24/7, yep. 365 days a year, yep. um, you want to be able to get some vitamin D3. Correct. So, and that, you can most most is most D2, Steve. Oh, no, most of it's D3. They're these starting days. to get educated D, now. D2's okay. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with D1 is synthetic and you won't find that's bad. No. But D3's fine. Now, unfortunately, in Australia, we're restricted to 1,000 microgram uh, international units per how tablet. much? How much would you recommend that we do? 5,000. Wow. So you need that's what the literature saying. Okay. Well, by one study where they gave them 6,000, which is still a normal dose, mm. um, it improved their glucose tolerance dramatically. And, and if you happen to be you know, locked in your house at the moment for some reason, don't know why, but to say you're not allowed to go out, then vitamin D becomes vastly more important because mm. if you're inside, you're not making any vitamin D. And, and here's the other thing. You can't get it through glass. No. So if, if, if you're sitting there and glass. going, okay, I'm, I'm locked in my house, um, I mean, you can't go to the window and sit in the window in a sunroom no. or something like that and get your vitamin D. No, because vitamin D, uh, you've got to remember sun, uh, sunlight, the vitamin D needs to be below 400 nanometers of length right. and glass cuts that out. Ah, is that what it is? Yeah. So it lets light come through, which is just, you know, above yeah. the ultraviolet, yeah. you know, or, or below the ultraviolet, whichever way you're looking at it. And, but it doesn't allow ultraviolet to come through, not in significant amounts. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Oh, and and when, 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 when you do like a... An analysis when I was in the, in the chemist, we had to use a special glass that was made of silicon dioxide that allowed the passage of UV light so we could test the spectrum of the chemical we were testing. That's cool. Yeah, so a little bit interesting. But, but so, you know, if you're inside a lot and, you know, especially if you live in Victoria, and I'm picking up Victorians, I am a Victorian, and it's bloody always cold and miserable and grey down there. Mm. Even in summer when I go down there to see my family, it's cold, miserable and grey often. Well, so. that's four seasons in one day, right? Yeah. It's, 40 degrees one yep. minute and, you know, minus 10 snowing the next. Oh, I remember a 40 degree day at, at school. We all took off to the pools after school in high school and a cold change hit and we had to ride home like about 5.30, about an hour or two later. And it was you were, because you were coming out of the pool in shorts and literally freezing, <laughs> cold from 40 to about 16. It was crazy. I remember those days, pretty crazy. But vitamin D, and you can test this in your blood, you know, and you want to be about, well, in Australia, we have a, about 50 to 150 is the limit. And you want to be above 100. Right, um, and that's the healthy level of vitamin D. So that's that's a, a good one too. Omega three fatty acids reduces the inflammation that you mm. find in PCOS. Yep, that's that's a good one too. Fish, great source, obviously. Fish is good because you also get a bit of vitamin D and vitamin A from fish. Yep. So yeah, that that's also a very good thing to to look into. So you know, as I said before, you can be genetically prone. Now I've got a graph here that we'll we'll put up here about the aromatase activity of people with PCOS compared to people without it. Now, I'll show you quickly here. You know, look at the difference. Yeah, massive. That's yeah, massive. you're talking a factor of, of probably nearly three, two and a half, two yeah. and a half times, I'd say. So so if, if you're in this group, you're not going to make much estrogen no matter what you do. Yep. So you really have to be good on the diet, good on the supplements and all this sort of stuff because genetically you're at a, a, a pre... It doesn't mean you're... Yeah, it doesn't program you to get it. It just means that you have to work extra hard not to get it. So what herbs, Steve, would you be using? The, the classic Chase berry. Yeah, Chase berry is a very good one for yep. this. That Which was is v- one. Vitus, a- Vitus. Vitus. Yep. yep. Um, berberine containing herbs are yep. very good Tastes too. disgusting, so get that in the they capsule. Do. Yep. They, they help the gut microbiome. They work like metformin. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So they increase acumensia. Actually, slightly better than metformin. Really? Yeah. I mean, there's lots of herbs you can take for this. Anything that helps with diabetes. Yeah. So any of those diabetic Cinnamon, herbs. Cinnamon, you were yep. mentioning before. Yep. Uh, yerba mate is a great yerba. herb for this. Yeah, cool. Because you actually uh, uh, burn more fat. But particularly the, I'll call them anti-androgen herbs, but they're pro-progesterone herbs like the Vitex is extraordinarily good. Now, that also increases dopamine in the brain. And this brings us on to the other aspect ah. of, of PCOS is they suffer horrendous headaches. Uh, mental health. Oh, well, I was going to say as well, too, it's funny because we heard a lot of people that um, uh, c- came back to us and said that when they started taking, um, you know, products with Vitex in there, that they yeah. were starting to get headaches. Yeah, of course. And it's like, it was really, really interesting, Steve. So the biomechanics around that? Yeah, because uh, Vitex is, a, is, we'll call it a female herb, and it increases progesterone and increases estrogen because it increases ovulation. Now, estrogen is a chief driver of migraines. Mm-hmm. So um, you can get 
um, migraines because that's why women get three times more migraines than men because of the estrogen they've got. Yep. So it, it can increase female sex hormones, which lead them to headaches. But, and, and the thing is, people go, oh, well, if it increases estrogen, um, I don't want to take it if I'm fit, healthy female looking to get lean. No, it, oh, makes, the, no. it yeah. makes the good type of, of estrogen and it detoxifies the bad stuff. Right? Correct, so, it does. And and you got to remember that... Because good estrogen is good. Of it course makes, it is. I mean, it makes women, women. Women, right? women and women lean. Yes, lean. It's, so, and that's the thing. People go, oh, estrogen, no, no, but it's the estradiol. So yes. that's the 16, Steve. The, um, oh, the, the estradiol is, is E2. That's the potent estrogen. Yeah, yeah. And then that can be verted into all the other, the 2, 4, and 16. Yeah. And the 4 and 16 are the bad ones. 2 is the good one. Yes. Yeah. And all these herbs push it down the 2 pathway, which is what we want. Yeah. Things like the brassica vegetables do that as well. So broccoli, broccoli yeah. cabbage, um, that sort of stuff as well. Yeah. Too, right? So so what we've done, we, we, when they've done analysis on women's bodies – when they've matched the BMI... Are we allowed to? Yeah, they... they well, I didn't do this study and published oh. uh, in, in Frontiers in Endocrinology, okay. so I, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm just quoting someone else. Okay. I didn't look All at right, just somebody you get in I trouble, wouldn't. Steve. All right. <laughs> this is a controversial study. I'll, I'll put it that way, all right? Okay. Where they examine closely a woman's body oh. with PCOS oh. compared to what they call matched control. So in other words, let's say a woman with PCOS, a little bit overweight, so they've got a BMI of 27. They're not overweight, Steve. They're just shapely. Ah, and that's what we're getting to, the shapeliness of a woman with PCOS. I can't talk about that. I know, but, but I've got to. This is, this is, here we go. They get the letters. Are you going to mansplain it to me, Steve? I am. They're, compared to the BMI matched controls, the women with PCOS have higher accumulations of a type of fat called visceral fat which is under the abdomen fat that you see the big beer belly guys with, that's visceral fat. Yeah, they're disgusting. They have higher abdominal subcutaneous fat, so that's the fat around here that's under the skin. They have um, higher amounts of total body fat, trunk fat, and android fat. And they're android all fat? Android fat, where, where men tend to put on fat. Oh, right, okay. You know, compared to a woman. Women put on fat. Lovely. Yes. Beautifully. And, you yes. know, I won't mention the areas because that'll get me that's, in trouble. That's banned. Yeah, but um, women with PCOS put it on areas where... Men would typically put it on. Correct. Right. So they tend to be smaller in the areas that women yes. put the fat on and yeah. larger in the areas where... So it's... But typically men put fat on, on the gut. Around the waist and the gut and all this Why and is stuff. Why steep? Because the androgens tell the fat where to go. <laughs> Isn't it? It sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. But it also tells us to make more big muscles and all that. Yeah. But you've got to remember testosterone and estradiol are very close. So if, if you're an aging man and you've got higher levels of this estradiol uh, producing enzyme we called aromatase, which happens in men, that's, aromatase is our enemy as men. Yes. Because if we get too much aromatization, we tend to put on fat like you see men with, with gynecomastia. Boobs. Yeah, man boobs. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to say that? Don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know what I can say anymore. No, so. I don't I'm know. just saying it. And they, they get larger butts just and saying. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And that's like dangerous. Big. Yes. Mm. But there is a treatment for that, um, you know, aromatase inhibitors. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, so women, we, we, who's Jim? <laughs> <laughs> women have the opposite problem with PCOS. So, okay. so, so the, the, the bottom line with PCOS is get, wake up in the morning, go and do your exercise. So we get up and exercise first thing in the morning, and then we have a high polyphenol-rich breakfast that's very low in carbohydrates, Okay. <laughs> Omelette eggs with all the veggies in it. I had some brilliant quips then. Yeah, I, I got cancelled by my own cancelled culture Nazi. <laughs> this is like Brooklyn. Take, for, for those who are listening, this is take three of this one because oh. we've offended too many people in the previous two takes. Everybody apparently, according to Brooklyn. Yeah. I wasn't offended. <laughs> I, 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 keep us from getting sued. So morning tea, if you're hungry, a few nuts, a few, um, you know, fruits with high polyphenols. That's good. A big salad with lots of leafy green vegetables for lunch. Um, you can put a few nuts in there, but a fair bit of protein to Go keep your full. fish? Yes. I mean, like, you know, fish yes. obviously for the, for the um, omegas. Yep. And for dinner, you can have your omegas with vegetables. Try and get broccoli involved in that yep. in that dinner. And, and look, um, broccoli, if you can as well too, go for the organic stuff because yes. it's very, very highly sprayed. Yeah. Um, like you're getting a lot of chemicals in there that you probably don't want. Yep. Just to take the burden off your system so that your um, your detoxification, your P... Oh, cytochrome P450. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Um, can work effectively. And Good. focus on detoxifying that. That's the problem. If you've got... You don't want a, more, a war on multiple fronts. No. If you've got a problem, try and clean fresh lots of purified water get rid of the stuff with the aluminium and the and the yeah. uh 
And the uh, what else do they put in the water, Steve? Fluoride. Fluoride. Mm. That's the other one. That's just just try and get you know. I mean, we get one from the spring water. We drink yeah. it here. We drink yeah. it at home. It's just it's just one more thing that your body doesn't have to deal with. Correct. And and the broccoli you mentioned, the cytochrome P450 enzymes. One of them is the 19A1, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone through to estradiol. Which what 1981? Uh, 19A oh. uh, letter one. Oh. So you can Google that if you want at home. That that's an enzyme called aromatase, mm. and you want to upregulate that. And so broccoli does that. Okay. So, so this is good news if, if you want. And now, look, all right, let's talk about dessert, a little bit of dark chocolate with the polyphenols. But you can get a bit of apple and dip it in some nutmeg or cinnamon. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's like a medicine then. Yeah. But it's nice medicine. Well, it's, it's, you, know, you can't eat broccoli and chicken, yeah. you know, every day. No. Bro- broccoli. And you, and you can bake apple and cinnamon. You know, that would be all right. A little bit. And then maybe look at, obviously, I mean, look, refined sugars in moderation. and uh, yeah. uh, It's not terrible. A little right? bit, yeah. A little bit. Um, but but just find other ways of trying to use natural sweetness. Sweet. But if you increase protein and fiber, mm-hmm. you also then slow down the release of those sugars as well too. So, look, we're not all androids, Steve, no. and we need a little bit of pleasure in life. We do. Um, they call me the pleasure machine, Steve. Yeah, I'm sure they do. No, no one has ever. <laughs> But anyway, I dream. Maybe I had a dream about it being one day. But look, the thing is, is that we need pleasure. We do. We it's do. weird making eye contact when we say that. We need pleasure. So um, <laughs> don't look at me, Steve. Um, so I think uh, you can't be a, a nun. No. Nah. Oh, you can be actually. Ooh, For all the nuns out there. Yep. You, you can, can be a nun be if you want. Yeah. You can be anything you want. You can be a attack helicopter if you so, want to. So this is scary because this is one in five women have this disease. Mm. I mean, it's huge, and and it's just growing. It was one in seven a few months ago, or well, wow. a few years ago. When I was looking, so so we've got to do all the things we can to to beat this disease. It was only first described in 1935, so it's sort of a recent recent disease, and yeah. now it's one in five. Yeah, yeah. Scary. It's, it's, it's interesting, actually. What would be really good to do is actually do a major meta-analysis, if you like, Steve, about all of the major diseases and tracking what they have done for the last 100 years. Yes. Because I think this kind of would That's be a really a podcast. cool podcast. Because And this is a big problem as well, too, and this is where I get it. And we have to be cautious we don't get yeah. into the same trap. Mm-hmm. Correlation and causation is not always the same thing no, sometimes no. and look you know 80 20 rule mm-hmm. yes you know if you see some outlying things mm-hmm. but we have to be careful that we don't but let's have a look at it let's why don't we do a study of all of the, the top 10 major diseases and i'm talking the top 10 that are afflicting and or killing people oh and gosh. and see how they have tracked over the last hundred years mm. as education information and science have improved yes we know more mm-hmm. but yet more people are afflicted by these yeah now you have to look at the model does the model actually just put a Band-Aid on the, product, uh, on the problem? Does it recycle it? Mm-hmm. Because it's, I'm telling you what Matt and I always say, that one of the best business models you can create is create the problem and then provide the solution, <laughs> which actually isn't a solution, but just compounds the problem. Absolutely. I mean, yes. that's Evil Corp, right? Do you remember, mm. what's that show with Evil Corp in it? Um, mm. oh, that really good actor who won um, the... Uh, something like that. No, iRobot's the producer of the... Uh, um, come on, man. No, 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 no. Who, who's the guy who played Freddie Mercury and he won the Oscar for it? He was really good. He was in a TV show with... Um, Malik? Yeah, Malik. Yeah. Yeah, and he was in a TV show. Anyway, and the big bad corporation, that was actually a really good show. Um, look into predictive programming if you're kind of watching TV shows and going, wow, I think I've seen that before. What? Why is this happening in real life? Yeah. Um, We've got to get it out there. But, yeah, um, what is it? Ah, can't find it. Um, and, and it, yeah, it was actually a really good show. Anyway. Um, right, so, so we've, 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 we've really... You're in a headlights moment there. It's just like, huh? Yeah, we're, where am I going where where we have to. Yeah. So we've, we've, we've summarised what a Picos woman can do with yeah. her day, and, yep. and, and that's good. I mean, also, you know, get rid of the stress. Out of your life, that's always good. All these sorts of things. Easier said than done. Steve. Yeah, I know. But it's certainly, tough. and again, it's kind of like the podcast we said last week. Go and just have some fun. Yeah. You know, as, as I said the other day, like I was getting pretty down on it all and feeling mm. a little bit upset mm. about mm. just the state of the world, yeah. about the state of humanity. And then you sometimes, you know, you just got to unplug, 
yeah. spend time with your family, cherish exactly. those things that really make you happy, and um, and just do that. I know. I've got a biochemical reason too, which spoils this a little bit, but yeah. basically cortisol mm. is detoxified down the same enzyme as testosterone. Oh, there you go. So if you've got high cortisol, it stops your testosterone being detoxified. <sighs> yep, yep. Stress, right? Stress is so, Stress so bad. is huge. So bad. All right. Well, that's the PIGOS. It is. That's up today. Thanks, Steve. That was a really good was update, good, mate. Good fun. And um, we're going to be back next week. All right. All right. We'll see you all next week then. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Files, Batman Files, Robin flew away. Wonder Woman lost her bosom flying to AA. Oh, and and I listened to the Australians and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to ride. Yeah, you're offending 80% of them. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> they need to be offended. Oh, of course we do. They're offensive. We are. They're revolting. We are. Yeah, Convict based. Well, how does that rhyme? That's terrible. Doesn't rhyme. Stupid kids. Stupid Australian kids. <laughs> yes. Go to school. That's terrible. Yeah, oh, they are God. terrible, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. Mine's we are all more stupid <laughs> yeah. to having listening to that. <laughs> it my <gorgeous>. never happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we better. Sorry, you bunch of malachas. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what Yeah, hey? <laughs> yeah, cut that part. Yeah. It's my IQ over thirteen sometimes. <laughs> no, the, the the best nuts. If you wanna if you wanna you wanna chase nuts and you love your nuts is <laughs> is nuts with skin. Yeah wouldn't disgusting things. Terrible Don't things. cut that. Terrific <laughs> 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 that Have you seen that one? That with the goat on the internet? <laughs> yeah, it's just <laughs> <laughs> Can you just put a goat head on when they go like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> they? It wins on every uh, level. I'm a genius, Steve. Jeez, you're going to get banned there. I'm, no, I'm not. She's going to take me out with a hit squad. Get the